Hi, and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude, and part number seven of the Dragon 135th scale SDKFZ 251-21 drilling. All right, in the last video, part six, um, I got the rest of the assembly done. Uh, mainly it was working on this here, the gun mount and guns. And I got this, which is the extra armor skirting around said gun. Uh, the small sight shield, the main gun shield, and this little, uh, I think this must be some kind of a travel lock or something like that that mounts to the front of this and the front of this. I also got this put together, the uh, seat, and now we're ready for paint. I've already got everything primed. I used uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500, cut 50-50 with uh, MLT, Mr. Leveling Thinner. And now we're ready to actually start painting. And for that, I'm gonna be using MRP Dark Yellow RAL 7028, AKA Dunkel Gleb. Just kidding, it's Dunkel Gelb. Uh, it's all been shaken up, ready to go. And I think I'm actually going to change my camera over to the paint booth so you can see what I do over there. I rarely show that and I've had people ask questions and I'm really gonna talk in depth about it in a future paint video. But uh, for today, we'll just kind of take a look. Um, I'll talk a little bit about it. Then the actual painting will probably be a time lapse so it won't take forever. And some lovely music in the background for that. And uh, yeah. So let me get my camera changed over to the other mount and we'll get to painting. All right, got my paint, the uh, MRP Dark Yellow. I'm using my Iwata HP, come on, shine on there. My HP M2, single action, to control the paint flow. You just turn this around. I like using it for uh, you know, single color paint jobs or base color paint jobs, um, smaller primer jobs, um, clear coats, whatever. This is a really, really good airbrush. Um, so I'm using that. And let's see, what am I going to shoot first? So let's get the stuff over here that I'm going to be shooting. So we've got... The smaller parts we got this and we've got extinguisher seat and we've got the main vehicle we'll start with the small stuff um, oh also there's my uh, propellant system CO2 cylinder with a gauge. Works like a champ. All right. So enough blabbing. I am going to load this thing up and start spraying. All right, so I've got the base color on there, and now I can start thinking about um, some camouflage. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to glue this on because this is going to have to be uh, part of the camouflage paint. I can do this separately. Um, there's nothing on here, so it shouldn't be too difficult. So let's see here. Um, so I need to peel the tape off. Don't need that anymore. I mainly put that on there for the uh, primer. All right, so there's that. 
I think before I um, glue, well, I guess I could glue that. Yeah, now I can glue that on there. Oops. So this goes over here like this. Okay, so I need to glue that in place. And uh, then I can start working on the camo. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> The first thing I'm going to paint with the camo is this part here. And <clears throat> I'm supposed to be using two um, additional colors, a green and a brown. So I'm using MRP Red Brown and MRP Olive Green, both RAL colors for German World War II AFVs. So um, I'll kind of explain what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm using this airbrush, the Neo Furiwata TRN1 Trigger airbrush, um, just because I can get way more control with the uh, amount of paint that I'm shooting. My dexterity like this ain't what it used to be, so I find that a Trigger airbrush works really well. That I'm not going to demonstrate. It's basically going to be some very um, low pressure because that paint is really thin and really close work. Just getting in there and uh, building it up. So I'll do this real quick and then come back and show you what it looks like. So just as a quick uh, note, I'm running about 12 PSI on this and I may drop it even more. But especially with this really thin paint, you got to run your pressure really low. Because if you don't, you can have that happen right there. That's why I did it on the bottom. That right there is with the uh, 12. So I shouldn't have any trouble with uh, spatter or spidering or anything. Okay, so there is the first round of color on there, the green. And I'm using the instructions here as just a guideline. I'm not trying to follow it exactly because I, it's it's virtually impossible to get it exact. You can get really close, but I'm not too concerned with it. I'm just you know trying to follow it as much as I can. But uh, you just want to stay inconsistent. You don't want to have stuff patterns repeating and stuff. You want to keep it mixed up. So I'm going to finish up the amount of green that I've got in my uh, color cup on the main vehicle and then I'll throw some brown in there and finish this part here so you can see what it's going to look like or kind of get an idea at least. All right, so here it is so far. That's all the green. So my next session, I will do the red brown. Okay, the camouflage is complete. The gun mount shield is in place. So now I can uh, apply the decals. Now the decals, there's two, that's it. These two right here on each side, one on each side. So let me get my materials for that. We've got the old decal water we've got a small cutting mat here to cut them out and some mark fit i'm going to use on this one see how it works so first things first i need to cut the decals off of the sheet now what's kind of cool i don't know why they give so many bleeding decals but we've got these these came with it which is a bunch of different markings for different units, um, which is cool to have in the old uh, decal file. And then this one here, German, G-E-R-M-E-N, half track vehicle license plates. So you come, you get these license plate placards and then all of these numbers, so you can create whatever you want. So that's kind of cool if you're doing a very specific vehicle, 
you would be set. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. Well, we are talking about it, but that's not what we're doing in this case. So let's get these cut out. Like that. Put these in the bag to save for a later date. And then let's see, let's get my special decal tweezers. I use these tweezers because they have this rounded edge on them. It's just, you know, something I do. Makes me feel like I'm using all of my tools. All right, so we'll let that, uh, let those soak for a minute. All right, so let's get some mark fit stuff. Put on there like that. Then using the edge of this door here is pretty much lined up with the center of the Balkan Kreutz. So put it just like that. Just whoops, just like that. Not too hard. Nice flat surface. Don't have to worry about conforming to any detail so just roll this on there make sure all the fluids mashed out of it and the bubbles are not present and then per to me a usage instructions i'll just put a little bit more on here just to make it stick all right we'll do the same for the other side all right well that's drying i can actually start in with some uh detail painting we've got to paint the tracks we've got to paint the uh, tools a few other small items so let me get my paints out and we'll get cracking on that first thing i want to paint is the uh tracks and i'm just going to sp spray them right there on the vehicle with my handy dandy TRN1 Neo for Iwata. Um, Cause I can get in really close. I'm just gonna spray it and I'm not gonna be real super precise. I may get a little overspray on the wheels and all the other stuff, but you know what? It's all gonna be good in the end. So I'm gonna spray the tracks and then I will uh, do the track pads in uh, rubber color and uh yeah we'll be doing good and then i can move on to detail painting the tools and really that's all i need to detail paint because everything else is just the uh vehicle color so i am going to spray that real quick uh, i don't know if i said it but i'm using mrp extra dark rust which is just a dark reddish brown color and also really quick before i move on one thing i want to mention um I have to say that uh, Dragon, in my experience, now I haven't built like a whole junk ton of Dragon kits, but uh, when I have, their decals have been really good. These went on here with just absolutely no problem. And if you'll notice, they uh, really don't have any sheen to them. And if a person were, were done with the kit, uh, you could leave it. You wouldn't have to do any overspraying or anything because the uh, decal film is virtually invisible. So just wanted to throw that out there real quick that, uh, yeah, Dragon, you know, they got some weird stuff going on with some of their uh, instructions and stuff like that, engineering some things. But, you know, got to give credit where credit's due that their uh, decals are really nice. So onto the tracks. All right, so there's the first phase. Got the track metal parts sprayed with that dark rust. And voila, track pads are painted. About five minutes worth of work between the two. Awesome. Okay, detail painting's done. Got the uh, tools painted. And really that was all there was for detail painting. So. I'm gonna call this one done right here. This one, meaning 
part 7 of the Dragon 135th scale SDKFZ 251-21. So next time in part 8 when we come back, I will begin the weathering process. I'm going to do that as its own standalone video. That way, if people know how to build stuff, but they want to see what I do as far as weathering, they can watch and be amazed or laugh or turn the channel or whatever. But anyway, that's it for now. So, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all later.